Hey guys, I'm NiceMark and today I have 55 things that you probably didn't know about in Minecraft. This is the fifth video in the series, which means that if you've watched all of the previous videos, you should know about 165 facts by now, which is quite a lot considering that I'm trying my best not to repeat myself and all the previous videos that I've made in the past so there are probably hundreds, if not a thousand, of facts already. And this first fact, we're gonna jump in right away, is first of all about crossbows being able to shoot firework rockets. And also, the firework rockets can bounce off of surfaces and walls, as you can see right here. So to do this, you actually need to shoot the firework rocket at an angle, because if you shoot it straight on, it can get stopped and just fall to the ground. And sometimes it also flies through the block. At least it seems like that. And a quick fact about Endermen. If you stare at them in their eyes and never look away, they'll actually never attack you. The brewing stand in Minecraft is made out of a blaze rod, and you can see it in the model. So here's the blaze rod, and here's the blaze rod in the brewing stand. You already probably know that you can jump up into water that is above you, but did you know that you can actually jump up even higher than that? Here we have water that is not directly above our head, there's one block of air above our head and then there's the water and we can still jump up. In videos like these I'm trying to find a lot of different information so it's not just all about sheep for example or cows. And this is a fact that I want to show you that actually doesn't work in Java edition. So for now I'll replace it with shulkers are able to break anvils but the real fact will be in the Bedrock Edition video, which will be released a week from now. Check the description. Spiders and cave spiders are neutral during the day, so if you do not attack them, they will not attack you first. But why is it that cave spiders, even during the day, attack you in mine shafts? Well, the answer lies in the light level. So during the day, there's a lot of sun, there's a lot of light, so they do not want to attack you. But in mine shafts it's dark and they want to attack you because of that. I've done a few tests as you can see on this video here and as long as the spider is in the range of the normal light level it will not attack me but as soon as it walks out of it it will suddenly start charging me. Just pay attention to the spider that is going behind the corner and there he is. Suddenly something happened. You used to be able to grow a tree out of one single log. What I mean by that is if you planted a sapling at level 255, which is the top of the world, and grew it, you would just get one single log. Now it doesn't work anymore, so I'm just gonna tell you that the maximum height at which you can plant an oak sapling is 251. At that height you can use bone meal and grow an oak tree. Since different types of trees have different heights, you're going to have a different maximum level for each different type of tree. The prismarine block has an animated texture. It changes from green to blue. And if we observe it for a short period of time, you can slowly see it changing from green to blue. An interesting thing about it is that it changes the texture in your inventory, on the ground, when it's placed as a block and when it's dropped as an item, and also in item frames. So it pretty much changes the texture anywhere in Minecraft. Another block that has an animated texture is the Sea Lantern. And if you look into the block, you can see circles coming from the inside to the outside of it. And again, you can see it on the ground, in item frames, and everywhere else in Minecraft. The beacon beam actually goes through quite a lot of blocks. For example, slabs, enchantment tables, dragon eggs, bedrock, and again, slabs, because there are a lot of different slabs, but I just have wooden ones in stock and also through shulker boxes. 
There are probably a few more blocks like glass and let me know in the comments if I missed anything else. You can enchant items and blocks which you don't have a durability with regular enchantments. Now of course this is not the best weapon against a wither for example, but for chickens this is perfectly fine. And a very good upside is that it will never break while still having all the effects of the enchanted book. So here, as you can see, I'm using a stone enchanted with sharpness, as well as a bamboo, if I can hit the chicken, and also the regular stick. You can search for items in Minecraft Creative Menu not just by their name, for example, for oak sapling, you can type oak space sapling, because that's the name. You can also type the ID, and to see the IDs, you can press F3 plus H at the same time. This would be very useful for mods that add a lot of items. So you would type, for example, if it's a vanilla item, Minecraft colon oak underscore sapling, which is the ID for the item. And the same works for pretty much any item. You can start typing the ID for redstone items and it will give you a list of all of the redstone stuff. If you want to build a very hidden entrance, what would you use? Pistons? Well, you can just make a gap with a chest and a slab, just like that. You can also use saw sand. In my hidden base I have whiting, but that's probably not very smart because you can obviously see it from the outside, but if I broke the torch it would be very difficult for somebody to find my secret entrance even though it is open all the time. So you can easily swim in and also easily swim out provided that there is water for you. It doesn't always work on the first try, but if you try hard enough it's definitely going to work but you can put a boat in a minecart or a minecart in a boat. Well, I think it's the first way where you put the boat in a minecart and then you can sit in the boat. At least I think that's the way it works. And once you finally get this done, it takes a few tries. You can have another passenger. And another benefit is that it can move on its own even if you leave the boat or I guess that's uh, not, an, not a positive thing. And the controls are a bit difficult as well even on the ground. And if you're wondering if this can swim you can just see my attempt to save this boat because it keeps moving and I'm just trying to place rails but I don't know. I don't know how to explain this. It just ran away from me and you can be sure that it didn't stop there. In older versions of Minecraft you used to not be able to see smoke through glass. Now it seems like they fixed this, however you can still not see smoke through nether portals. So the campfire is generating smoke, but through the nether portal it is not. And the same goes for rain. Can you see rain? No, I cannot see it through the portal. And of course, same for the fire parts code. Ocean ruins can spawn on land. Now it's very difficult to find this, so here's an ocean ruin in the ocean. But if you've ever seen one on land, definitely let me know in the comments and if you can, attach a screenshot. Villagers have work hours and they work from 2000 until 9000. Now in survival it's not easy to tell the time in numbers, but you can see it here on the clock. This is 2000 and now we're going to change it to 9000. Which of the two is more durable, the obsidian or the quartz? Well, if you answered quartz, you're wrong, and if you answered obsidian, you're also wrong. The answer is they're both the same. And why do you think it works like that? Well, there's actually a trick using slabs, stairs, and water. 
So let's build this exact same thing. So we have a construction made out of stairs and we are going to waterlog it. And it is as simple as that. So you repeat the process until you have a nice wall. Uh, you can make different constructions. You can use swabs as well if you need. And after you complete it, it is going to be blast resistant and it's going to be just as strong as bedrock or obsidian for TNT, of course. You can still break it with a pickaxe. So it works with all types of stairs and slabs. You can have it made out of wood, for example. Uh, that would be very interesting to see for other players, I bet. And also, another thing that you should know is that you can use this same trick not just for walls, but for pretty much anything, for the ceiling, for the floor, and you can have a completely blast resistant room, which you cannot break with TNC. So here I'm finishing the wooden construction and as you can see, it's blast resistant, even though it's wood. And here's a short clip. It's something that's very simple, but if you have a bridge, for example, you can make it like this and it's going to be blast resistant. You can actually hang on to the bow that is hanging from the ceiling. So here you might not see it, but I am actually on the bow. And if I break off the box around me, I'll be hanging and I'll be stuck on it. I can even go around it, uh, all the way around it, but I need to be very careful. The tool that you should use for harvesting crops is the shovel. And of course, you probably already know that you can enchant an item with fortune and get extra seeds and crops. So with a shower and challenge with fortune, you get a lot of them. You can see the shulker inside his shell if he doesn't escape uh, by using an invisibility potion. And there he is. When you dig out the ground and place torches and carpets on top, all of the mobs will get stuck. So either you can stand on top of the carpet and not get attacked by zombies or the zombies will stay there and not attack villagers. So right now I'm not playing on peaceful mode as you can see by the zombies and the moment I step off the carpet they're going to try to attack me. So let's try pushing out the villager and as soon as he is off the carpet, he's going to run away. And the same goes for any other mob. You can cook pickles in a furnace and get lime dye out of it. On maps, sandstone and glowstone have the same color. The stems of carved pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns are directional. However, the stems of normal pumpkins will always face the same direction no matter which way you try to place them. As you can see in this last row of pumpkins, which is to your left, it is completely in the same direction. Smithing tables are very good for your ceiling. And also, you can use them for your floor as well, because they have an interesting texture. And here's how it looks. Some recipes in the crafting book can be right-clicked for more information, for example, for sticks. There are a few items that you can place on doors, for example, torches, redstone torches, levers, tripwire hooks, of course, saw torches, and, well, excuse me, I'm trying to make a video here. Okay, well, I guess that helps us. You can also put buttons. And if you use a button, it's going to open and close the door and everything is going to break.
Another block that has an interesting texture for ceilings and floors is the barrel. And also you can use it as a chest in your ceiling or floor. Here's the texture for the floor. As you can see, it looks like spruce wood. And if you place it the other way around, you can use it as a ceiling, which looks like this. Scaffolding only goes to the side by six blocks. On the seventh block to the side is going to fall down. Well, an easy trick to fix this is by placing a sand on the last block and then you can bridge out even more. So of course, you want to know what happens when you break it. Well, this is the entire point of this because you can just break the bottom block and everything is going to break and then you just need to collect the sand and also collect the scaffolding just like that even though it's hard to see throwable items like snowballs and water bottles have a 3d texture when thrown Ender rods melt ice in Minecraft. I also tested ender chests, they don't melt ice. And I tested normal torches of course, but that's pretty obvious that they do melt ice. And something that is very interesting, so torches don't melt ice. As you can see here, after a couple of minutes, uh, the results are that ender rods melted quite a lot of ice, even more than torches but so torches didn't melt anything. The lever or the lever, depending on how you pronounce it, has redstone particles on it when it's activated. You can enchant a shovel with silk touch and use it on snow to get snow layers. And you can use these snow layers to make a snow block. And after you make the snow block, you can actually use the shovel on the snow block to get yourself a snow block, which you can use to build. When breeding red mushrooms, you have an about 0.1% of spawning a brown mushroom. And the same is true for two brown mushrooms spawning a red mushroom. This is not a fact, just a quick break. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And I found these two snow layers which are floating. Let me know in the comments what you would do with them. Would you make a museum around them or would you break them like me? Mobs can pick up elytras. Now it's very good that mobs don't know how to use firework rockets because otherwise you'd have a problem in your world. In case that does happen, you can drop a chest plate and they will pick it up instead of an elytra. It seems like narrow brick fences are not friends with any other type of fence. For example, here you can see a crimson, warped and normal fences happily connecting together, but nether brick fences just don't want to connect to anything. You can make very narrow walkways uh, just like this, and this actually reminded me of the walkways you have at an airport, which might be empty and you still have to go through them, like through the entire way. And you can build the same in your world if you want. You should not chop down trees in a swamp. The reason for that is that every tree in a swamp is kind of unique. If you try to plant a new one with a sapling, it is not going to work because the tree that you will get is not a swamp tree, it's just your normal oak tree. This next fact is not about asking why, it's about doing it because you can. You can smelt coal in a furnace, you can smelt diamond ore, lapis, emeralds, redstone, quartz. And I think that covers it. Uh, did I miss anything? I think no. But yeah, if you want, you can smelt the ore. So you can use silk touch, then smelt it, 
who cares about fortune anyway? Zombies will destroy turtle eggs upon sight. And the way you can protect against this is by understanding why they do it. Well, they do it because there's two blocks of air above the egg. So if you build a little roof for your turtle eggs, the zombies will not be able to trample them. And it's as simple as... Well, maybe it's not so simple if you don't build it first, but it's as simple as that. Just look at that. Nobody wants to trample this egg. Unless you remove the block that is above it. If you destroy the block that the lantern is hanging from, it will break the lantern as well. But did you know that you can use turtle eggs for lanterns? And they will hold them just fine. So you can have those little... Oh, not again. Why are you doing that? Here's a little trick for furnaces. You can be lazy, chop down a tree and just throw in what you got as fuel, or you can craft slabs. And when I used an oak walk, I only was able to smelt one item. And compared to slabs, I was able to smelt four items and I still had one wooden plank left over. I don't know if this trick is obvious or not, but you can use a hole on coarse dirt to turn it into regular dirt. Uh, definitely let me know in the comments if I should include facts like this or not. There are some items that the composter will not accept. For example, bamboo, coros, poisonous potatoes and dead bushes. If we take the ferns, for example, it will accept them without a problem. But these items, no. You can even try sugarcane and it will work, but bamboo will not. Before, in older versions of Minecraft, bamboo and sugarcane were kind of interchangeable. They were pretty much the same thing by Minecraft standards, but now they are two separate things. And a bamboo shoot can be broken by water. So that's the same as sugarcane. But if you grow a bamboo shoot at least once, it turns into a mature stalk and you can no longer break it with water. This is not the same as sugarcane. As you can see, no matter if it's coming from the side, if it's coming from the top, I still cannot break it and it will not grow either. If you want to make a zoo or a museum and include a shulker, you can. Just make sure to leave one empty block so it can peek out of its shell. If you don't do that, it will teleport away. But if you do leave empty space, it will live there happily. And it doesn't have to be made out of glass. You can pretty much use any other block, even dirt. And again, the same rules apply. Leave one empty space. If you look at the redstone block, you can explain where the power is coming from. It could be powered by the redstone block itself. But where is the lever getting power from? Well, in Minecraft, the redstone block can only power six lamps and a lever can power 11 lamps. So just think about it. An item that is getting power from nowhere can power more lamps than a block made from redstone. Here's a machine to make you crawl in Minecraft. It's very simple, you don't have to use redstone lamp. In fact, I would recommend glass so you don't get hurt. And you just have a sticky piston that is pushing down the block into your head. And when this happens, your character will start crawling. Do iron golems have red pupils? The answer is no, because Mojang posted a clip of an iron golem and in the clip you can see his eyes moving. If you ring a bell, witches will get an outline. It's not very obvious during the day, but during the night it's really helpful if you want to avoid them. And an interesting thing about it is that you can actually see them through walls. 
So here you go, you can see the outlines. Your helmet, even if it's from netherite, will take damage from a falling anvil. A person from Reddit was able to jump two blocks up by using fall damage to boost himself. You can put iron golems on a lead and carry them around with you. The Minecraft world is made out of regions, and the regions are made out of chunks. You can easily replace, export, import these regions. And it's quite simple, but also a little bit difficult. So I'm going to make a different video about it on how to export the regions. And I'm going to include it in the description. So if you are interested in that, definitely check it out. And one more very interesting thing is that you can subscribe to my channel, like this video and leave a comment for more videos. And I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.